exchange traded funds and people's eyes glaze over but here to explain what they are and how much they can be useful to you is Howard Atkinson president of Horizons ETFs Management Canada Incorporated Howard great to see you great to see you we Pat. should probably go through what an exchange okay. ETF is okay. it's like a mutual fund so it's mm -hmm. diversified but mm -hmm. it trades on the exchange like a stock so it's the best of both worlds, mutual funds and stocks. What do, what do they typically invest in? Well, they started out tracking indexes, so equity indexes like the TSX 60. So that ETF would own the 60 names in the index or the S&P 500, all 500 names. Mm -hmm. But trade on the exchange with one ticker. So with one trade, you own the 60 or the 500 stocks. Those were the early days. Today, you can get ETFs that give you access to bonds, commodities, currencies, alternative strategies, and even ETFs that give you portfolios of ETFs. One-stop shop, uh, shopping, basically. Correct. How popular are they? Becoming more so uh, every day. So last month we hit 65 billion in, in assets in Canada. That's an all-time high. Canadians can also invest in U.S.-listed ETFs, which now total about 1.7 trillion. So there are literally thousands of, of ETFs available to Canadian investors. Okay, why would I buy a, an exchange-traded fund as opposed to a mutual fund? They're both funds, right? Why would I do that? Right. Three main reasons. One is cost. ETFs are, are far less expensive uh, than mutual funds. Uh, the second is transparency. You have ongoing disclosure in ETFs. So pretty much every day you know exactly what you own rather than waiting for a quarter end or semi-annual uh, year end to find out what you actually own. Mm. And, then, and then finally, they trade throughout the day like a stock. So you have better liquidity. Rather than waiting to the end of the day to get your price, you can buy or sell anytime the stock exchange is open. Okay, why should I care about efficiency? I get that because mm -hmm. that eats into your long-term returns. Why should I care about transparency? I mean, why, why do I need to know what's in my fund? I give it to a guy and he takes care of it right. for me. I think it becomes, Pat, very important when you're trying to construct a portfolio. So most investors will construct a portfolio owning a number of different securities, a number of different funds. Mm. If you don't know what's in each fund, how can you assemble the funds together to have a diversified portfolio? What ends up happening, if you don't know, is you can have redundancy. You can own two or three funds that virtually own the same thing and you're not getting the diversification you thought you were. So with transparency, you can see underneath the portfolio and know exactly what you own. So you end up with a more efficient portfolio. Are ETFs only for kind of like do-it-yourself or investors? No, they work with advisors and in fact, increasingly more advisors are starting to, to use ETFs. Uh, the reasons for that is they've come down in costs even more so than when they started. Mm. There's more of them available covering all these asset classes. And we have new industry regulation kicking in later this year that's going to shine the light on cost and performance disclosure. So ETFs, because they're lower cost, will work very well under that new regime. So you're seeing a lot of advisors starting to increase their usage of ETFs. Okay, a lot of people out there aren't, aren't using them as far as they know. Maybe their advisors got them into it. How yeah. does somebody uh, who is a do-it-yourself or get started into that? Uh, I think the first stop is go to the Canadian and ETF Association, go to the website. Uh, this is an association of ETF providers. The majority of ETF providers uh, are members. And there's a wealth of information there from basics to sophisticated strategies to white papers. All of the ETF providers that are members, there's links to their website and there's more than enough information for anyone. There's also 10 portfolio manager members that are members of, of SETFA, the Canadian ETF Association, and they actually advise individual investors on ETF portfolios. So they also bring a wealth of information from an advisory standpoint. You know, I've worked with ETF people in the past and, and uh, you know, it used to be kind of a basic thing. It's becoming much more nuanced. I mean, how do you how do you educate yourself on the nuances of the new ways of uh, ETFs? Right. Uh, it takes a little bit of research. There's books available now on ETFs, of course. Uh, it really it comes down to knowing what you own, knowing what's inside of the ETF. Uh, and if, you th if you're familiar with mutual funds, you have a pretty good understanding or uh, starting point for understanding ETFs because ETFs are similar in that there's equity ETFs, there's fixed income ETFs, commodity ETFs, uh, balanced ETFs, currency ETFs, for example. So knowing what the ETF owns and transparency helps is sort of your starting point. Uh, and then you can construct an efficient portfolio once you know that. Yeah. Can you go see, see an advisor and say, I only want to deal with ETFs because they're low cost? Does right. that happen? Uh, you can, and some e uh, advisors do deal almost strictly in ETFs. Some will, will use funds as well, and there's nothing wrong with combining the two. But because they're such low cost, you can really manage the costs uh, in your portfolio. Right now, there's about a trillion dollars invested in the mutual fund industry, average fee of around two percentage points. So that's $20 billion or so a year in fees. If we moved all that money to ETFs just for fun and let's pretend, Would you like that? We, yeah. we, we would love that. Uh, your fees go down to about $4 billion. 
Now, there is a little bit of apples and oranges comparison there in that all the mutual funds have embedded advisory fees. But even if we account for that, the savings to Canadian investors annually is somewhere in the magnitude of 5 to $10 billion in fees. And that's much better in our pockets compounding than in someone else's. Okay, mutual funds, some of the big ones in the States, for instance, PIMCO does bond mutual funds. Right. And they have uh, the one that can be done like a mutual fund, but also an ETF. How do the two structures exist side by side? It's, uh, it's up to the provider and the manufacturer. In fact, we believe that going forward, you're going to see more and more asset managers who were traditionally mutual fund managers also offer exchange-traded funds. We've already started to see that. PIMCO, Fidelity, Invesco in this country, BMO in this country. Uh, so that is going to continue. And it comes down to different uh, channels of distribution. So uh, in, in some places like bank branches, mutual fund dealers, currently mutual funds are, are much easier for them to deal with. But if you have a brokerage account or deal with a securities licensed advisor, uh, ETFs work very well in that environment. Howard, great ideas. Thank you. My pleasure. Howard Pat. Atkinson, yeah. president of Horizons ETF Management uh, Canada Incorporated.